Hi, I'm Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge, and I'm here today in this Affinity Creative session to explain how to draw an isometric, stippled, tattoo-esque style castle in Affinity Designer. Before I get into the tutorial, let me tell you a little bit about myself and the Artifacts Forge. I'm an illustrator and designer based in Cardiff, Wales, who specialises in creating innovative design tools which help users bring real media techniques into their digital artwork. Be sure to check out my brushes and other useful design tools at the Affinity Store or on artifactsforge.com. For this tutorial, I'm going to use my tattoo art brushes to create the illustration. The pack was designed to help users create tattoo-influenced stippled artwork, and it contains a huge range of brushes which we'll explore as I create the illustration. Right, let's get into the tutorial. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. To do that, I'm going to go to the File and then New Menu. And I'm going to work in pixels, so I'll set that there. And this document is going to be 2000 by 2000 pixels. Now I come from a print background, which means I generally work in CMYK mode and at 300 dpi. And I'm just going to create that document. And the next thing I'm going to do is to place my rough. So I'm going to the File and Place menu, and I'm going to select my castle sketch here and double click it to place it. And I'm just going to upsize it a little bit. So using the Move tool here and holding on the Alt key, which constrains proportions, just going to upsize the rough so it roughly fills the page area. Actually, that's slightly off center, so I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit more and center it like so. Now, I'm going to lock the castle sketch layer by clicking on the little lock icon here, and I'm going to create a new layer on which I'm going to put my outlines. So I shall name that Outlines. As you can see from my rough, I'm creating the castle in an isometric style. And because it's a hand-drawn image, the rough is not accurately isometric. Luckily, Affinity Designer has a handy isometric mode. So I'm going to show you how to set this up now. And the first thing I'm going to do is open the isometric panel. So I'm going to View, Studio, and Isometric. I'm also going to make my grids visible by going to View and Show Grid. As you can see, the standard square grid is visible. Um, and I'm now going to change this. To do it, I'm going to go to Modify Grid. And this brings up all of these new options. As you can see, the default isometric grids don't actually fit with my image. So I'm going to need to adjust them. And the way I do this is I click on Cube here. And you have this nice little cube image that you can move around to adjust like so, and I'm going to adjust these values so they fit my artwork. So if I bring this down, as you can see, it's gradually changing the angle, and I think that's roughly right there. And I'll just make sure that's exactly centered at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, and that fits fine. OK, so I'm going to close the grid and snapping axis options. Next, I'm going to enable snapping by clicking on the magnet icon here. And that ensures that everything that I create will snap to the guides. But there's one final thing I need to do before I can start drawing, and that's to click Edit in Plane. Edit in Plane ensures that all of the objects that I draw automatically become isometric. So before I click on Edit in Plane, I'm going to draw a rectangle and just demonstrate what happens. It's just a standard rectangle. So we'll delete that, click Edit in Plane, and now we have a perfect isometric rectangle. You can switch between the three planes by clicking here. As you see, the grids change as I click. So we've got the front option, the side option, and the top option. So if we try the other side, we end up drawing a rectangle from that plane. So back to the front, and there we have it. Now, because we're looking up at the castle, 
we only need to be concerned with the front and side planes. We don't need to worry about the top for this tutorial. Now it's time to start drawing. I'm working in the designer persona as opposed to the pixel persona um, because I want to use my tattoo art outline vector brushes um, to create the castle outlines. We'll be using the complementing stipple raster brushes from the same pack to create the shading later on. The first thing I'm going to do is load the brushes and to do this I need to open the brushes panel which can be found in the view, studio and brushes menu. To select my tattoo art brushes um, I'm going to click on the drop down menu here and select tattoo art brushes. As you can see the pack contains a huge range of brushes. We've got um, some dot and dash brushes here, um, some tapered brushes, uh, lots of outline brushes with different degrees of kind of undulation and some arrow brushes here and some dots and dashes. I'm going to start by drawing all of the isometric parts of the castle. Uh, you'll see that there are a couple of elements of the illustration which aren't isometric. So for example the clouds and the sun, the moon and the overall outlines. But pretty much everything else is. And before starting to draw we just want to make sure we have edit in plane clicked on here and that we're in the plane that we want to be in. I'm going to start in the front of the plane. And so I'm going to start by just drawing some basic boxes. We're going to apply the brushes after we've created the boxes. And I'll start on this turret here. I'm going to simply select the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag. Now we don't want this section at the bottom so I'm going to convert the rectangle to curves by clicking the convert to curves button and I'm going to select the node tool and I'm going to add a new node here. I'm going to select it and while holding on the shift key also select this node here. And now I'm going to break the curve and that gives us two separate sections and I'm just going to hit the delete key and that removes that. Now I'm going to duplicate this box by holding down the alt key and dragging it and then I'm going to flip it by clicking this button here. And because we've got snapped curves on it instantly snaps in place and fits with the other, other box. Now I've just extended the line here so that it just goes down to where it hits this rock and we're also going to remove this node because we've duplicated this, we have a duplicate line here. Now I'm going to select both lines here and we're going to apply a brush and I'm going to use this bottom brush here. As you can see that's way thicker than we need it so in order to make our brush strokes thinner we go to the stroke tab and we reduce it down like so. I think maybe we just go a little bit thicker maybe four points there we go. Right now it's time for me to draw the uh, top part of the turret and because we've got our snapping enabled here um, it's going to make life very easy with adding the lines to make the top of the turret. Um, so we're going to use the pen tool for this section which you can find here and just click on it and you can instantly see as I drag the cursor down it just it knows where the previous lines are so all I do is click and then we have a line instantly lined up perfect and the same there and as you can see it's also lining up with the isometric guides Now I'm going to duplicate these two lines. So using the move tool to select them. I'm holding on the alt key and I'm just simply dragging. And that just duplicates the section. Now I'm going to flip that horizontally by clicking this button here. And it just snaps straight back into place. Now I want to select all of those lines that I just drew. And I'm going to click on the same brush that I clicked on before and adjust the stroke width so it matches the previous lines. For the lines here, we want those to be parallel 
to this line. So again, I'm going to duplicate that section and remove the unwanted nodes using the node tool by clicking on it and just deleting. And I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. So let's try 1.5 points. And I'm going to position it. And again, I'm going to, with it selected, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm just going to drag so we duplicate them. And then I'm just going to select all of them and group them. Now I want to duplicate that entire section. So again, holding down the Alt key and duplicating. And then we will flip it horizontally again and just pull it into position. The next job is to create some little uh, circular roof tiles um, for the top of the turret. And to do that, we're going to remain in the current plane and we're going to select the ellipse tool and we're going to draw like that and as you can see it's nicely um, isometric. Now I'm going to convert this circle to curves and we're going to delete the top half of it and to do that we're going to select the node tool and select two nodes there and simply break the curve and then we'll delete the top section and then we'll go back to the move tool and we'll duplicate the sections. And then I'm just going to tile them up, as you can see, like so. Then we're going to select all of those and group them. Then the next job is to, again, apply a brush. So simply click on a brush in the tab and adjust the stroke size and we'll go for two points this time and see what that looks like. Now I'm going to scale the tiles down so that I can fit them in this space. And the next job is to crop it. Now we could, instead of cropping, delete all the individual nodes and make it fit perfectly, but that doesn't allow you to then move it around and change your mind later. So I, I'm always in favor of using masks. Um, and so to create a mask, we're simply going to draw a shape above this group, like so. And I'm gonna recolor it so you can see it. There now. And we're literally going to grab a group of tiles and we're going to drag it into the icon for the shape. So as you see, as I do it, the outside disappears and it gets cropped. Now, the curve is currently blue and you really don't want that. So we're just going to recolor it so it's transparent. And the great thing, as I say, about doing it in this way is you can select the group that's inside the curve and you can move it around. Now, I'm of course going to duplicate that for the other side and I'm going to flip it horizontally and reposition it. I'm next gonna draw this section of the castle and there's a really quick way to draw these little castellations. And to do this, I'm going to start off with a rectangle and I'm still in my isometric mode. So it automatically goes to the shape I want it. And then I'm going to simply draw another series of smaller boxes here. And I'm duplicating them so that they line up. And what I want is five boxes all lined up together. So they all match up at the top here. And then we're going to scale them down so they fit exactly inside the larger box. And then we're going to delete the first, the third, and the fifth boxes. And now we're left with two boxes, which we're going to subtract 
from this shape here. So I'm going to select the two little boxes. We're going to merge them into a compound shape by using the add function here. Then we're going to select the compound shape and the box below it. And we're going to use the subtract function. And there you have it, really quick castellations. Now I'm quickly just going to delete these unwanted areas here. Like so. Of course, I mustn't forget to apply a brush to it. So again, I'm just going to click on the brush and adjust the stroke size to four points, like so. The next job is to create the rest of the castellations, and I'm going to do this by duplicating the existing bit. So as always, I'm holding down Alt and I'm dragging to duplicate. And then I'm going to flip that horizontally and put in place. I'm just going to shrink that one down slightly. Now it's time to add the um, cliffs at the bottom. And these are not technically isometric because they slant ever so slightly. So we're just going to draw them with the pen tool, just semi freehand really. And then apply a brush. And again, we want to make it four points. Now we can duplicate those. Do the ones the other side. To create the downward lines, we will use a different brush. So we can draw our lines here and duplicate them. We're going to select all of them and we're going to use one of the tapered brushes. And we'll shrink that down until we're happy with the width, like so, and then just adjust them as we need them. If you want to add a little bit more variety, you can always add one of the other tapered brushes instead. So I'll select these two lines and then click on one of the other brushes. And obviously we have to adjust the stroke size to match. I'm just going to add a few extra details now and then we're nearly done on the outlines. Now we're going to add our final isometric items, which are the windows. And I'm going to add another layer just to keep things simple, which I will of course name windows. 
So to create the windows, I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. I'm simply going to create my rectangle, which is automatically isometric. And then I'm going to add some corners to it using the corner tool here. So to use it, simply select the corner tool, select the corners you wish to uh, make round and drag like so. Now I'm going to fill the center of these windows in so that they're black. And make the stroke nothing. And for the other windows, I'm simply going to duplicate this one and shrink it down. If your corners become distorted, simply reset them using the corner tool so that they, then you can just redo them and they'll be nice and even. Now we're going to do the same, but in the other plane. So switch to the front plane, create your window, select your corners and make them nice and round. There you go. Next, I want to add some um, outlines to the windows. And to do this, I'm going to first duplicate the windows layer. I'm gonna lock the original windows layer and make it invisible by clicking there. And I'm gonna select every object on the duplicated windows layer. And I'll make the fill transparent and the stroke I'll make black. Now all I need to do is click on another brush and you probably guessed it, reduce the stroke size. You'll notice that you get these little gaps appearing on some of your windows. Um, this is because uh, the two brush ends meet at this point. Um, and the way to get around it is to select the corner node and simply break the curve, then just adjust your nodes very subtly like so. Now that I've finished the window outlines, I'm simply going to rename the layer window outlines, and then I'll turn on the windows layer. To draw the clouds, I'm going to um, draw them freehand with the vector brush tool. Um, so we're first going to turn off snapping and go to our grid settings and go back to automatic. And we no longer need to see the grid, so we'll also go to view and click show grid again, and it turns it off. So, as I said, I'm going to do this freehand. So I'm going to select the vector brush tool, and I've got my brush selected there, and I'm going to select a stroke of three points. And we're just going to, on a new layer, which we'll call clouds and we're just going to draw click 
and drag like so. And the same for this cloud. There we are. And the great thing about vector brushes is that you can use the node tool to adjust your previously drawn strokes. So if you're unhappy with any of them, simply delete a node or adjust the anchor points like so. You can also swap in any of the other brushes. So if you want to add a bit of variety, simply click on another brush. Like so. For the underside of the clouds, I'm going to revert back to the pen tool um, just because I want a really straight line. And I'm going to hold down the shift key as I click so that I get a horizontal line and then simply apply the brush and change the stroke size. And then I'll duplicate that line and add it to the other cloud there. These strokes do need a little bit of neatening up, so I'm gonna go back to the node tool and remove a few nodes and just generally neaten them up. Next, I'm going to add another layer and call this sun and moon. And this is one of the simplest things. You simply get the ellipse tool here and draw a circle. Very straightforward. I was holding down shift as I dragged there to keep it in proportions. And, and now I'm just going to apply brush and adjust the stroke size to, I think four points will do. We want to delete the unwanted sections, but before we do that, I'm just going to duplicate it because we can use that, the same circle for the moon as well. So back to the deletion, all we do is convert the circle to curves, select the node tool, add your nodes, select the two nodes that are closest to the area you want to chop off and break the curve and simply delete. Now back to the moon. We're going to shrink the circle down slightly so it's the correct size and we're going to rotate it ever so slightly and then we're going to copy and paste it. So that's control C and control V and then we're going to shrink that down slightly while holding the shift key. And group those two circles together. For the circular outline here, I'm going to use a combination of a solid line down the bottom and a dotted line at the top. Um, so I'm gonna place a new layer and I'm going to place it just above the rough. And I'm simply going to get the ellipse tool here, hold down the shift key, which makes sure that it's a regular ellipse and put it where I want it. I'm going to make a copy of the circle by just copying and pasting like so. And I'll name the top one dots and the bottom one outlines. Now I'm going to knock out the outline one and select the dot one and we're simply going to select the tattoo art dot brush here and adjust the stroke until we're happy with the size. I think about seven points would be good.
Now we only really want the dots to show from about here to here. So we're going to convert the circle to curves, select the node tool and add some new nodes where we want to break it. And as always, we select the two nodes we want to break and click the break curve button. Now I'm going to delete that section, which will take it up a little bit higher there. So we'll take that node out. Like so. And what we want to do is we want to create another clipping mask so that these areas here aren't seen. So what we'll do is we're going to draw shape using the pen tool over the areas that we would like to see. Like so. Now I'm going to select all of those shapes that I've just made here and I'm going to turn them into a compound path by clicking add. Now I'm going to drag the dots circle into the curve icon and as you can see it crops it. Um, we then want to make sure that the clipping path itself is not seen. So if we select the curves layer and go to color and make it transparent. If you want to adjust the clipping mask you simply select it, add new nodes, and adjust it like so. Now it's time to focus on the outline circle. So I'm going to make the dotted ellipse invisible. I'm going to turn the outline on, select it by clicking on it, apply a brush, adjust the stroke size, about six points will do. Then I need to convert it to curves so that I can edit it. And now we're going to use the node tool just to add some new nodes so we know where to break the curves. And we're going to select those two curves, click break curve and delete the top section like so. I think that just needs a tiny bit of adjustment there. Tiny bit more, that's better. And now we're going to turn the dotted curve back on. And now that the outlines are pretty much finished, I'm going to turn off the sketch layer. I'm now going to add some texture to the background. And I'm going to do this by creating a new layer and then placing it below all of the art that I've created. And we'll call this paper texture. And then I'm going to file and place, and I'm simply selecting my file and then upscaling it slightly so that it fills the space. Now I'd like to reduce the texture a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the opacity to 60%. And now I'm going to add a white box in the background, just so you don't see through the paper. I'm now going to add some brick detail, but before I do that, I'm going to select all of my layers and I'm going to lock all of them so that I don't interfere with them as I work. So in order to add the brick texture I'm going to go back into isometric mode so I'm turning back on the grid here and I'm going back to my isometric panel and modifying the grid back to cube and doing the settings as I did before And now I'm going to create a new layer. 
and I'm going to rename that layer Brick Outlines. Oh, and I mustn't forget to turn on my snapping. So now I'm simply going to get the pen tool and I'm going to draw some lines just on the grid here and I'm going to duplicate five times. Now, as you can see, they're unevenly spaced at the moment. So we're going to go up here and we're going to align the centers and we're also going to space them vertically like so. I'm just going to elongate them a little bit. And as you can see, as I drag them, they remain isometric. Now I'm going to apply a number of different brushes here. but they're all going to be different ones of these dashed line brushes. Like so, and obviously they're a little wide at the moment, so let's just adjust the stroke. Let's try three points, and that looks better. Now I'm going to group those. And now I'm going to add some vertical lines again with the pen tool. And I'm going to use the grid to position them. And I'm going to apply one of the short outline brushes. And again, set the stroke to three points and then duplicate them. As you can see, I can use the grids here just to make sure everything's evenly spaced. I'm going to duplicate them again and do the offset brick pattern. And I can duplicate everything I've done so far and position them like so. Obviously, they're not perfect at the moment. I'm just going to do a little bit of neatening up here. And now I'm going to select all of those and group them. And then create a group with the other brick outlines. Before I create the rest of the bricks, I'm just going to reduce the width of the vertical lines here. So I think they're a little bit wide. That's better. Right, and rather than redraw all of the bricks, I'm just going to duplicate this section and then crop them using clipping masks as I did for the roof tiles.
Now I think I just need to reduce the size of some of the windows so they fit better with the bricks and then the outlines will be complete. I'm now going to add some blocks of colour um, to add some more contrast. It's just going to be simple flat colour um, to which I'll add an inner glow later. Um, so to do this I'm just going to use the pen tool and I'm going to create a new layer and call it deep blue. And I've already selected the colours that I'm going to use here on my swatches panel. So I'm just ready to go. I'm now going to add an inner shadow to each of these shapes that I've drawn. So I'm going to select them like so. I'm going to go to my effects tab, select inner shadow, and I'm going to change the color to one of my swatches. And I'm going to adjust the radius like so. And we'll make it a little bit deeper. And now I'm just going to add that to the other two layers that I just created. Now it's time to add the finishing touches to the illustration. And we're going to do that by adding some stipple texture using the stipple brushes from the Tattoo Art Brush Pack. The first thing we need to do is switch over to the Pixel Persona by clicking this button here. Now I'm going to add a new layer just above the coloured layers, which I'm going to call stippling and I'm going to go to the brushes tab and in the drop down menu I'm going to choose the tattoo texture brushes now I'm going to pick this second one here and I'm going to set the color to black Then I'm using the square bracket shortcut to enlarge the brush and I'm simply going to draw. And you can just keep adding the texture until you're happy with the density. 
and then you simply erase the bits you don't need using the erase brush tool. Now I'll just set it to a brush, a very basic brush, and adjust the size using square brackets key. And as I say, erase the bits I don't need. Now I'm going to add the rest of the stippling. Um, I'll do it on multiple layers because um, that's just easier. I'm now going to add some orange shading to the bricks just to give them a little bit of final definition. So I'm going to create another stippling layer and call it brick stippling. And on that layer, I will add a pixel layer to work on. And I'm going to select a denser brush and change the color to orange. Now what I'm going to do with this is just take that tiny section there, I'm gonna erase everything else. And I'm going to duplicate it a number of times and place it at random positions as I go. Now to give the impression of variety, I'm going to repeat the process with the same brush, 
but it'll be a slightly different texture. So we end up with a variety of brick textures. I'm now going to merge each of the brick stippling groups um, so I can erase any unwanted sections quickly and easily. So after I've got my group, all I do is click on rasterize and just go to the eraser tool and just take out everything I don't need. Final thing I'm going to do is just neaten up a few little lines and imperfections that I've noticed and then the image will be done. So I'm just switching back to the designer persona to do that. And there's the finished design. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. You can pick up the tattoo art brushes featured in this tutorial, plus loads of other amazing resources in the Affinity Store or from artifactsforge.com. Thanks so much to Sarah for inviting me to create the tutorial 
and thanks to everyone for watching.